Hello boys and girls, my name is Moses. They call me a mountain man. The reason they call me a mountain man because that's where I live. I live in the Rocky Mountains. What we're going to talk about today is about fur trapping, about the life of the mountain man. And my job living in the Rocky Mountains was a fur trapper. In other words, I went up there to catch animals for their furs. What I'd like to start with and show you is some of the furs that I've caught over the years. Okay, This here is a coyote. Okay, now if you kids were here with me, I'd ask you what these were and we'd let you pet them, but uh, today we can't do that. So today I'm going to show you what they are, and uh, like I say, this is a coyote. A lot of kids want to call him a wolf, but he's not quite a wolf, okay? He's not as big as a wolf. Next animal I got right here is a, let me sneak around here if you don't mind. This right here is a red, a red fox. Now I know some of you guys have probably seen some foxes around here that look red, but this one is from, from the Rocky Mountains and that's why he's so pretty. This is probably one of the prettiest ones that I catch when I'm trapping, okay? All right, now we got one here that everybody knows what he is. And if you guys out there in the classroom, if you want to say what it is, provided your teacher will let you do that, we'll make a guess. But this guy right here, he's a skunk. Now. How come he doesn't stink? Got any ideas why? Now don't tell me just cause he's dead because the ones on the road are dead and they're the ones that stinks the worst. Okay? So this guy don't stink because he's had a bath. So you guys, if your mama tells you that you stink, she's insinuating that you need to go have a bath. So what we're gonna do here, we gave him a bath, he didn't smell. All right, so there's a skunk. All right, we're going to learn something here today. You guys out there now, can you tell me what this is, what this animal is? Now remember, we're in the Rocky Mountains. We're not in Africa, so he's not a cheetah. A lot of you guys want to call him a cheetah because he's got the spots on him, but he's not a cheetah. This guy right here is in the cat family. All right, I'm going to see if I can poke his head up here. Now we're going to find out just which one how many of you guys if you will raise your hands let your teacher know that you know the name of this and we're gonna see who actually knows the name of this wild cat okay now just so you know his name is a bobcat can you tell me why he's called a bobcat is that because his name is Bob no his name is Bobcat because his tail's been bobbed off the phrase was way back a thousand years ago when they named him that if his tail was cut off, he was bobbed off. So his tail has been bobbed off, so they call him a bobcat. All right, so now you know something and now you've learned something today. All right, next one I got here, this guy here, I call him the bully of the Rockies. Pound for pound, he's probably the strongest one, the meanest animal out there. He's meaner than a bear. If it comes to eating, if he's got food in front of him and a big bear comes up and tries to take it away from him, he will fight that bear off. He will run that bear off before he'll give up any of his food. So this guy right here, I call him the bully of the Rockies. Okay, can you name him? He's a badger. Now there's two badgers in the world and some people want to call him a honey badger. Honey badger he's not. A honey badger is from Africa. This guy here is from America so he's called the American badger. So once again I call him the bully of the Rockies. But he is also one of the best, the prettiest ones. Between this one and the red fox that I showed you earlier, they're the prettiest furs that I catch. Now you're probably wondering what do we do with these furs after we catch them? We send them off to the tanneries back east and they tan the hides, get them, like, get them looking like they are now, and they make ladies coats out of these. So it was a fashion back in the early 1800s that the lady wanted to wear a coat made from furs. And the fur, and the fur factory of the fur, go, it still goes on today, except that it's just not as prevalent as it was back then. In other words, a lot of ladies don't want to kill the animals, so they don't want to wear the fur animals, okay, the fur coats. But 
If we don't control the animals, if we don't trap them and keep them under control, eventually the animals are going to control us or they're going to run over us. So if you have fire ants come in your house, are you going to control them or are you just going to let them grow? Well, once again, you got to watch these guys, the fox, the coyotes, those type of animals. If you just let them run wild, eventually they're going to start killing your cats and dogs. So we have to control them. Well, that's what we do here. We just kill enough to do the furs and they grow back. The animals always come back. They're not to extension. So anyway, these are some of the animals and we make, like I say, ladies coats out of them. All right. So now to show you all these furs that I just caught, believe it or not, this is not the reason that Moses went to the mountains. Moses went to the mountains to catch this guy right here. No, he's not a, let me see if I can get him open. He's not a bear. Some of you guys want to call him a bear. He's not a bear, but I will give you a hint. He lives in the water. He swims in the water. Okay, he builds himself a dam. He's a beaver. Now, this particular beaver is about a 35, 40 pounder. I've caught them as much as 70 pounds, so I've caught them much, much bigger than this. Now, if we make coats out of all the other furs that I just showed you for the ladies, we got to have something for the men. Now, we don't make coats out of this for the men because they're too expensive. In other words, they were very, very valuable. The thing that we caught these for was so that we could make men's hats. And the hat that we make is very similar to this. It's a felt hat kind of looks like a cowboy hat but this hat can be shaped into different sizes and shapes it can be also have a square top hat if you want it you can pull one side up and pin it you can pull two sides up and pin it or you can pin, pin three sides and there you got a trifold so you can shape the hat many shapes and sizes or you can just leave the brim down but this is made from beaver fur and the beaver fur that we're talking about is the is the undercoat underneath here it's called the down coat it's the real real soft stuff what they would do is shave off all the hair take all of this off and these long hairs guard hairs they threw them away they discarded them and this is what they use to make the hats out of and as you see it's like a cowboy felt hat of today except it's made from beaver fur it was very waterproof and it was a very, very big deal for men that lived in Boston, Philadelphia, New York, even overseas in London, England, Paris, France. It was a fashion. Just like the ladies had their fashion wearing the coats, the men had their fashion wearing these hats. And it was a big deal. So if a man was going to town, he wanted to look his absolute best. And in order to go to town, or when he did go to town, he didn't want anybody to kind of look down on him, so he wanted to look his absolute best, just like you would if you were going to church. You wanted to look your absolute best. So that was the reason why us mountain men went to the mountains, okay, was to catch beaver so we could send the beavers back east and have the, tur the furs made and make into the hat. So that was the whole reason for us to go up there. There it was, I went to the mountains, like to froze to death, like to starve to death, like to got killed many times, just so I could catch beaver, so some city dude could go to town looking good. Okay, what I'd like to show you now is a few things on the table. Every mountain man had his trustworthy gun. This particular gun is used for two, two reasons. One is for protection, and one is to hunt with. Now this particular rifle is what we call a black powder rifle reason it's called a black powder is because of the powder that's being used to pour down the barrel. It's also called a muzzle loader and the reason it's called a muzzle loader is because this is where we load it. There's not an opening back here big enough to put the put the ball in which is a lead ball. We put the ball in here and we put it in. We take the ramrod, Mosey can get it out, and we take it and drive it in with the powder Put the powder in first, then you put the lead ball behind it. Now it's loaded. 
Now this particular rifle is called a flintlock and the reason it's called a flintlock is because right here is a small piece of flint. We put a small amount of powder here. What I want to show you here is a powder horn. This is some of the powder. We would pour it in here. Then we would close it. And by closing it now we've trapped that black powder right here in this it's called a pan or a frizzum pan. Now when we fire the gun off the flint is going to come down and strike this piece of metal and when it does it's going to shoot it down into the powder and then the powder is going to ignite and it's going to ignite through that touch hole there's a small hole there and when that does that flash is going to go through that hole it's going to ignite the powder that's in the rifle and that's what makes the rifle go off okay now I know that you can't see it out there guys but we're going to show it real fast okay and I know that you couldn't see the spark today because of the brightness, but that's how it's shot. Okay, once again, this gun is used for two reasons. One for protection and one to hunt with. Of course, you know that we're going to hunt so that we can have food to eat. Now, who would I protect myself from while I'm in the Rockies? Who would I protect myself from with this rifle? Can you tell me? The number one animal that I am afraid of and that I would protect myself from with this rifle is a bear. It could be a grizzly bear or a black bear, but he is the number one animal. The number two animal that I'm most afraid of and that would get me is the mountain lion. The mountain lion likes to sneak up behind me and either jump me from the back or he would take and get one of my horses or my mules, my pack mules, and he would kill him or he'd come in in the evening at night and try to kill one of my pack mules at dark. So I always had to have my gun for him. Now the third animal is a pack of wolves. If the wolves come around one or two, they're not quite so bad. But when a whole pack comes in, they have a tendency to gang up on me and they will kill my horses and pack mules. So as I said, this gun is used for several reasons. All right. So that is one of the things. Now, the other thing that's most important about this rifle is it for protection, not only just the animals, but there's other people that live up there. Now, there are a lot of Native Americans that live in the Rockies with me, the Indians that are there, but there's a lot of them that are friendly and there's a lot of them that are hostile. My life depends on knowing where they live. If you get up in the northern part of the Rockies where the Yellowstone is, there's a couple of tribes of Indians up there called the Blackfeet and Crow. These guys are so mean, they don't like each other. So you can imagine what they would do to me if they caught me. So I always have to have my gun for protection against them. Okay. Now on the western side, down around Colorado and Utah, there's a couple of tribes over there called the Utes and the Shoshone. These guys were friendly toward me. So I would go over there and trap with them and live with them during the harshest part of the winters. During the harshest part of the winters, you can't trap for the beaver because all the ponds are frozen over. So I would go and stay during January and February with the Shoshone Indians. And I became good friends with them. Okay. Well, let's get back to the northern part of the Rockies and I'm up there hunting around the uh, Blackfeet and Crow. When I get in their neck of the woods, I have to be very quiet. I don't want them to know that I'm there. If for some reason they find me, what do you think they're going to do to me? They would kill me or steal everything I have. So when I get in their neck of the woods, I have to be very, very quiet. Okay? So before we go any farther, though, I would like to show you some more of the things on the table. And we're going to come back and talk about those Indians in just a few minutes. Okay? Every mountain man had himself a set of knives. This particular knife is a knife that I use to cut up my big animals. Let's say buffalo and elk and big deer. I had to chop them or cut them up. This is a knife that I would use to do that. Now, as I started out, I told you that I was a fur trapper. So all the animals that I've caught, I have to skin them. This is my skinning knife. And also on occasions, if I fill up to it, and if I find a looking glass, which a looking glass, mirror glass water, it's real steel, 
and I can look at myself in the mirror, look at myself in the water, and I can shave. But you can see it's been a long time since I've shaved. So I don't shave often. It's cold up there. Okay? All right. I want to show you something else here now. All right, all you guys out there, I know what you're doing. You're trying to make guesses as to what this is. First things first, it's not an axe. An axe is designed to cut down trees. If we took this axe and went out there and started chopping on a tree, it'd take us hours, maybe even all day, to cut the tree down. So it's not an axe. Now, a lot of you city guys out there, you want to call this a hatchet. Hatchets are for city boys who want to go camping. This is not a hatchet. This is a genuine tomahawk. This particular tomahawk is a tomahawk that I got from an Indian. And I want you to notice the decorations here on the handle. This was his custom in his culture. He loved to decorate everything he had. An Indian, if he had a teepee, he painted it. If he had a horse, he painted it. If he had a gun, he would put decorations on it. If he had a wife, nah, she wouldn't put up with it. So, but anyway, this is an Indian's tomahawk. And us mountain men, we called them hawks, just to save a, save a word, save a syllable. So if I ever refer to these as a hawk, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. This is also a tomahawk, okay? So, let's go back and talk about the Indians. Um, as I said, in the northern part of the Rockies, the Blackfeet and Crow are very hostile Indians. They don't want you up there. So I have to be very quiet. So when I get in their neck of the woods and I'm up there and I'm hunting, am I gonna grab my rifle here and shoot a squirrel or a rabbit for supper? I better not, because if I make that shot, it's gonna make a lot of noise and they're gonna know where I am. So how do you suppose we're gonna hunt squirrels and rabbits without using our guns? You guys have any guesses? You think by chance we could kill one with a tomahawk? So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna attempt to walk over here and we're gonna show you a block of wood. If you'll look right over here, okay. We're gonna to attempt to kill us a squirrel up on a tree. Okay. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're going to, I'm gonna show you an attempt to see if we can't kill us a squirrel. As you see, the two cards up here on the block, I want you to use your imagination and think of those as two squirrels up on a tree. So what we're gonna do is see if we can't kill us a squirrel with our tomahawk or our hawk. Now, I showed you the knives that were on the table. I'd like to now introduce you to another one. This is a knife that I use to skin my buffalo and elk with. As you see, it's a big knife, but it's also a skinning knife. This is also the knife that I use to throw. So with this, guys, we're gonna see if we can't kill us a squirrel, okay? Got him with that one, didn't we? Yeah. And a squirrel's bigger than a card, and if that that one there I hit right beside him, there's a good chance that I probably would have hit him. Now guys, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna do this, do it again, and I want you to keep an eye on it, okay? Let's see if we can't kill us another squirrel. Got him with the knife. Now guys, this is how we would throw at a squirrel. Now I want you to notice something that when we did throw at the squirrel, the handle is down. So if we throw at a rabbit now, what we're going to do now is attempt to go rabbit hunting. If we throw at a rabbit which is down on the ground, what's going to happen to the handle? The handle would hit the ground. So instead of throwing with the handle down, we're going to throw it now with the handle up. Okay? When we threw with the squirrel from back here, with the knife and tomahawk, it made one revolution. Now we're going to throw it at the squirrel, I mean at the rabbit, and the rabbit's down here on the ground. We're going to throw it, and the hawk is going to now do one and a half. One and a half spins. So the handle should be up. So now with this, guys, let's go get a rabbit 
put it up here and see if we can't kill us a, a rabbit. Rabbit stew. He ain't gonna run. He ain't gonna run. That's what you call missing him by hair. <laughs> Now, as you see there, it's not easy to do, but it can be done. Now, a lot of times when you throw at a rabbit and you miss him, what he's going to do is he's going to run off and he's going to run out there under a bush. And if he runs under a bush, I'm not going to be able to throw like I just did because the handle would hit the bush. So instead of throwing with the handle up like I just did, which is a turn and a half, we're going to throw it now crossways and see if we can't throw under the bush. So now we're going to attempt to kill the rabbit. All right. Cut him in the neck. Okay boys and girls, thank you for coming today. Thank you for allowing me to come into your classroom, teach you a little bit about the American Mountain Man. These are things that you'll probably never see in a classroom or in a, in a book at school but I uh, hope you've learned something today and uh, with that we're going to let you go for the day. Thank you.